What's up, VC? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel, and it's time for another edition of the mail. Um, this is going to be the uh, a Vinyl Me Please uh, unboxing. Um, I, I know a couple of people have already done this, but uh, I, I kind of wanted to share this uh, particular album and just kind of uh, share my thoughts on it. But uh, uh, if you're not familiar with Vinyl Me Please, I'm sure most of you are at this point. They've been around for probably about a year, year and a half now, but it's a subscription music service. Um, I think it's uh, $27 per month if you buy just one month. Uh, if you buy three months, it's 24, uh, 24 or 25 a month. Uh, and if you buy the year, it's like $22 a month. And uh, um, I've been really impressed with the stuff that they've been releasing. 75% um, of it has been just uh, top-notch albums that, that I would love to have in the collection. Uh, the other 25% are, are albums I just don't know or, or, or artists I'm not familiar with. So I, I can't really uh, comment on those. Um, but, uh, you know, probably about four months ago when they did Black Sabbath, um, that was the first time I really looked at, looked at subscribing. And uh, uh, then last month they did the Fugees, uh, the score from the Fugees, which I, I really wanted to subscribe uh, last month and start then. Uh, however, um, I was in Brazil and there was some issue where it, it just wasn't letting me do it from Brazil. So, uh, you know, it detected where my computer was logged in from and it wouldn't let me sign up for an address here. Um, so I, I missed out on that one. And, and, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, still get a copy of that and I'll talk about how in a minute. But uh, um, they, like I said, they offer the, 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 the monthly subscription plan, the three-month plan, or the annual plan. Uh, you can also get it as a gift uh, for a friend, um, but uh, uh, and then one of the cool things I like about their service, if you do the longer subscriptions, uh, if you do the three month subscription and, and during those three months, if if you get one album or one of the albums is an album you're not interested in or you don't like, uh, you can actually swap that out for something in the archive, which means something that's come out in the last three or four months. So. If in the next two months they put out something, I did the three month subscription this time, but uh, if they put out something that I don't like, I'll swap it out for that Fuji's album that, that I did want to get last month. So, uh, And then if you do the one year uh, membership, you're allowed to do four swaps during that one year. So you basically get one swap every every three months, uh, which I think is a really cool feature. Um, you know, that they recognize that there's going to be some stuff that they put out that... Uh, that you're just not going to be that into. So, uh, but uh, when I saw the album that was coming out this month, I had to buy it uh, or I had to sign up for it. I, I would have done the twenty-seven dollars for this particular album. Um, however, uh, I I, went, I decided to go ahead and go with the three-month option and just uh, see how it turned out. So this is the this is the box uh, that it comes in. It's just like the uh, actually it's a little bit thicker, but it, it's real similar to. Uh, the, the Amazon.com uh, mailers uh, and, and all but color. Like I said, this is a little bit thicker. Uh, I think this is actually a little bit nicer than the Amazon ones. But uh, So let's go ahead and open it up and uh, talk about what we've got in here. And here we go. We've got uh, the May 2016 album, and you can see it comes in this little Vinyl Me, uh, Vinyl Me Please uh, J card. And uh, the J card gives a little bit of information about the package right here. Um, this is something I've always thought that was kind of silly. Uh, you know, some people like it, some people don't. But it also comes with a, uh, it, it always comes with some kind of drink uh, recipe. Uh, some kind of cocktail recipe that you can, uh, that, that they say pairs with the album perfectly. Uh, we, again, I think it's kind of silly, but I, I know some people really like it. But this, this month's is the uh, Pinkerton uh, Sake Martini, which actually... Yeah, I wouldn't drink this. Three ounces of sake, which I'm a huge fan of sake. Um, fresh juice from a quarter of a grapefruit. Two tables or two teaspoons of ginger paste, which would automatically kick me out of there. I'm not a big ginger fan. Uh, and then one teaspoon of sugar. Uh, so 
not really my thing, but, uh, you know, if, if that's something you're into, then cool. Uh, it also comes with a, uh, a piece of uh, exclusive artwork. Um, and actually, it's an okay piece of artwork. Um, I would have preferred something a little different, and I'll talk about that in a second. But it's this uh, kind of a Japanese hybrid uh, piece of art here. Uh, the butterfly is significant in that uh, Pinkerton uh, is a character from Madame Butterfly. Uh, I only know that because I've read it. Uh, I, I, I have never seen Madame Butterfly. don't know much that much about it. But you've got a, uh, a very Japanese-looking woman with butterflies and a skull hand, which is, I, I kind of dig the, the skull hand and the, and the girl with the little fire here. But uh, cool piece of art, but... Uh, Oh, darn it. Uh, luckily, it didn't bend it. Okay, cool. Um, I, I've always loved the artwork on the Pinkerton album. Um, and you've got the Japanese woman on the back. And that, that kind of goes to one of the songs on here, uh, Across the Sea, uh, which is based on um, a letter that Rivers Cuomo, uh, the singer, received from a Japanese fan. And uh, it, it's a really cool story. I'm not going to get into it, but uh, uh, if you look up a little information on this album, you can find the story behind that. But it's uh, very cool. I would have loved a nice Japanese block print, something cool like this, or maybe a modern uh, print uh, as the artwork. Uh, I love Japanese art. Again, I, I lived in Japan for, for just or right at eight years uh, my wife and I have Japanese artwork and block prints all over our house. This is actually a, a pretty famous print, too, that this came from. Um, but let's uh, go ahead and take a look at this and, and talk about the album a little bit. Um, this is really a perfect album, in my opinion. I, I, I love this album. Um, I got into Weezer with their first album, with the with the Blue album. I, I really dug that when it came out. I think I got that through uh, BMG. So I got that through a subscription service too, which is a uh, kind of funny. But uh, and then uh, shortly after that, what year was this? Ninety five, I think. Ninety six when this came out. Um, so I missed out on this one uh, and didn't hear it for quite a few until quite a few years after it came out because I went into the Navy uh, uh, around the time that this came out and uh, I just ended up missing it. But uh, when I finally got a hold of this, I, I loved it from beginning to end. This is an, an amazing album. If all you're familiar with from Weezer is the Green Album or the Blue Album or... Um, the song Beverly Hills, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, this is uh, very far removed uh, from those albums. Uh, and sadly, uh, I, I mean, uh, this is their masterwork in my opinion. But uh, uh, sadly, it didn't sell well. Uh, and, and they received a lot of criticism for this when it came out. And uh, Rivers Cuomo went from really uh, being passionate about this album to absolutely hating it. For years, they refused to play anything um, from this album just because of the bad uh, or because of the uh, criticism that they got from so many people. When they basically went from a pop band to uh, oh, it's really hard to describe this album. This album is kind of a mix of pop, uh, pop punk, emo. Uh, there's a very garage sound to it. Uh, r the really nice fuzz uh, in the guitars on a lot of this album. It, it really is a, a really mature album. And by far the most mature album that they ever put out. But uh, And it, it's also a, a very introspective album. Uh, when Rivers was writing this, um, he was going through a tough time in his life. He, you know, he, was, he was dealing with... Um, the pitfalls of becoming a, a, an overnight superstar uh, with their first album while still being a college student. Um, he was also in and out of the hospital. Uh, he was born with, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but one leg was shorter than the other. And he was going through these surgeries and, and on uh, heavy painkillers for months at a time uh, to lengthen the, the one leg that was shorter. And uh, so he was dealing with surgeries and, and on drugs and and. And, and spending a lot of time in hospital beds just uh, thinking back on, on his life and, and how things were going. And 
that all played a part in this uh, this album, which again is very introspective. You know, some of the songs like uh, "Tired of Sex" and uh, a couple others talk about uh, uh, again the pitfalls of being a rock star. There's some some really uh, in- introspective stuff throughout this album, uh, and, and it really is just an amazing album. "Tired of Sex" is a really good song. Um, no other one is one that I really like. The good life is great. Uh, Across the sea, uh, and, and what I what I like about this is there's no filler in this album at all. It's a short album. It, it's only uh, I believe 34 or 35 minutes, and uh, it, it's just it's just 34 hour, or 34 minutes of great music. It really is a, a perfect album. Uh, oh man, it looks like I'm gonna have to email. I got mine is. Uh, split right here so I'll definitely be emailing them about this uh, and, and we'll see how their customer support is I'll talk about that on the next time I do a video uh, so this is kind of cool you open it up and it's got this little fold out of the block print uh, which I, I, I really really dig that uh, so it is a gate fold again really nice uh, cardboard it's thick cardboard unfortunately that's just the downside of shipping these days you know um, it doesn't seem to matter how well you package something. The only way to avoid that, it seems, is to do like uh, companies like Rockadrome or Hell's Headbangers do, where whether it's a new album or not, they'll open it up and slide the vinyl out and, and stick it behind so that that doesn't happen. But uh, So let's take a good look at the vinyl. Um, a couple of people have already shown this. Uh, but I, I still wanted to uh, to show it as well. Brock P Dub did a really good video uh, on this pressing, uh, and, and I recommend that you uh, check that out. But uh, here we go. Here is the vinyl. I think I, I read that it's 140 grain, or uh, 140 140 gram vinyl, and it is it is pretty substantial. It's it's still. At a 40, 140 grams, it's it's thicker than than most standard records. Um, so, what's really cool about this, uh, you can see it there. It's a, it's a really nice blue uh, with uh, black in there. But what what's really cool about this, and something that, that Brockapita pointed out, is in the dead wax. And you probably, yeah, I'm not going to be able to. You can kind of see where it's scratched out right there. And what's scratched out is MFSL one. And then the uh, the number, if you're familiar with uh, MFSL, that's Mofi, Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs. Basically, they took the Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs master, um, struck that out, and put their own number on there. And then uh, press it on 140 gram instead of 180 gram vinyl. Uh, and it's this really pretty uh, blue and black. And I've only heard good things about how good this sounds. Uh, I, I've, I've talked to a couple of people. They got theirs in last week. I was real late to sign up for it. I signed up for it on the last day that you were able to to get a copy of this, and uh, um, so mine was late to get here. But uh, still, really nice looking uh, blue with black marbling in there. Um, so this is my first vinyl, me please. Uh, and again, it's got the uh, the sleeve there. If I, if I remember correctly, it was pressed at RTI, uh, which is also. It doesn't get much better than that, in my opinion. So you've got uh, a Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab uh, mastered album, pressed at RTI. Um, like I said, it doesn't get much better. It's an amazing album. If you guys haven't checked out Pinkerton, I recommend getting a copy of it. Uh, again, it was just released by MoFi uh, maybe a year ago, give or take. Um, the price of that it has, it has been fluctuating, though. I've seen that uh, in the mid-30s to, to 40s. Uh, and then older copies uh, get pretty expensive, but uh, uh, at twenty, even if you buy, the, go in there to their archive and just buy a copy of this by itself for twenty-seven bucks, it, it's worth it in my opinion. Uh, an absolute uh, great addition to the collection. It's something that everybody should have. Uh, that's it, VC. I'll put a link down below to Vinyl Me, please, if you're interested in checking it out. Uh, and I'll be doing another video in the next few days. I got another uh, hard rock and heavy metal update coming out for you. So. Uh, Keep an eye out for that. Uh, take care, BC.